Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Read Mobile, presented by the Boys and Girls Club of South Alabama. I am Carol Stevens, I'm a recreation leader for the City of Mobile. I work with Parkway Senior Center, and I'd like to read today to you one of my favorite books. The title of my book is Every Monday Morning. Every Monday morning, Mr. Peters and his dog, Joey, got up early and walked to the bus stop to visit with Mr. Peters and his friends. Mr. Peters was retired, but he still liked to see his friends every Monday morning as they waited for the bus to carry them to work. On cold days, Mr. Peters wore a hand-knitted scarf around his neck. Sometimes the scarf was blue, sometimes it was red, but Joey always had a hand-knitted coat to match. Everyone at the bus stop and everyone in the neighborhood knew Mr. Peters and Joey. Sometimes a new face appeared at the bus stop and Mr. Peters always introduced himself and Joey. If other people asked what kind of dog Joey was, Mr. Peters always stuck out his neck and chest and said the same thing. He's a raw Welch, court, just like the Queen of England's dog in a fierce hunter way. Then Mr. Peters laughed and Joey wagged his stubbly tail. He didn't look like a fierce hunter, but to Mr. Joey, he was. Every Monday morning, Miss Kelsey, who lived next door to Mr. Peters and Joey, slammed her front door and raced to the bus stop. She worked at the church foster care center. Even when Miss Kelsey stood in line for the bus, she seemed to be running. Joey liked Miss Kelsey. She always had a dog biscuit for him. Every Monday morning, sometimes it was like in her pocket or a block in her slacks. Once it got lost inside of her handbag and Miss Kelsey found it just like before, the bus came to take her and the others to work. Every Monday morning, Miss Kelsey fed Joey and a dog biscuit. He wagged his tail to thank her. Then he would lay down to wait for Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters always spoke to Miss Jessica, the bus driver, and asked her about her father's arthritis. Then she asked what kind of dog Joey was. And of course, Mr. Peters always stuck out his chest and said the same thing. He's a raw Welch Corky, just like the Queen of England's dog, a fierce hunter. Then Mr. Peters laughed and Joey wagged his tail stubbly as always. After the bus doors closed and the black fumes poured out of that back of the bus, Mr. Peters and Joey continued their walk around the neighborhood. They passed by the church where Mr. Peters always patted the trunk of the maple tree and he planted in a memory of his wife. Then Joey and him went home. Mr. Peters gave Joey his favorite kibbles and then prepared his own breakfast. He always thanked the Lord for his food, even when it was just cornflakes. Every Monday morning, Mr. Peters and Joey waited for the bus to return in the afternoon. Every Tuesday morning was just like every Monday morning for Mr. Peters and Joey. They got up early and he walked to the bus stop and visit with friends. Every Wednesday morning was just like every Monday morning. And so 
was every Thursday morning and Friday morning. But Saturday and Sunday was different. On Saturday, people in the neighborhood didn't ride the bus to work. Instead, they stayed home and cleaned their houses, intended to their flower boxes, even went shopping. Everyone was always busy on Saturday. Every Sunday morning, they all went to church and worshiped the Lord. Mr. Peters and Joey liked Sunday. There were matching yellow on all the Sunday mornings. After church, they strolled around the neighborhood, visiting with their friends. Joey especially liked to play with the children, best of all. One cold, windy Monday morning, Miss Kelsey slammed her front door and raced down the sidewalk, pausing only for a moment to pet Joey. And then she gave him his favorite dog biscuit. You're lucky, Joey, she said. She had a warm hand knitted coat and you don't need mittens or a cap. There are eight children at the church foster home, but not enough money to buy winter coats for all of them, said Mrs. Kelsey. I have to think of some way to get more money. When Miss Kelsey heard off, Mr. Peters and Joey continued their walk around the neighborhood. Mr. Peters walked slowly. He was thinking. He forgot to stop by the bus stop. Even though he forgot to pat the trunk at the maple tree. Once he got home, Mr. Peters took off Joey's leech and coat and hung them by the front door. He was ready to go out again in the afternoon. He gave Joey his breakfast and a fresh water in his bowl and told him what a good dog he was. Joey barked, but before Mr. Peters cooked his own breakfast, he went to the closet where his wife's clothes were stored. On Tuesday morning, Mr. Peters and Joey got up early and they walked to the bus stop to visit with their friends. But they walked home quickly. Mr. Peters had to work, had some work to do. There came Wednesday morning, it was just like Tuesday morning. Mr. Peters and Joey got up early and walked to the bus stop. They didn't even wait for Miss Jessica to ask what kind of dog Joey was. On Wednesday evening, Mr. Peters was late for choir practice. The pianist frowned at him when Mr. Peters rushed into the church basement. He left Joey to lie on the mat by the door. Thursday morning and Friday morning was just like Monday morning. Mr. Peters spoke softly to everyone and asked Miss Jessica about his father's arthritis. He forgot to put Joey's blue coat on him. He even forgot to pet the tree. On Saturday morning, Mr. Peters fixed a squeaky hinge in Mrs. Kelsey's house. And on Sunday, he taught his Sunday school class as usual, but everyone noticed he and Joey at home more often. The next morning was Monday morning. Mr. Peters and Joey got up extra early and went next door to Miss Kelsey's house to ring Mrs. Kelsey's bell. The door flew open and Miss Kelsey popped out. What is it? What is it? She asked in a rush. Is something wrong? Is the bus late today too? Good morning, Miss Kelsey, said Mr. Peters politely. He lifted his hat and Joey barked. No, everything's just fine today. I came by to bring you this. He had a coat and a hat from his late wife's closet. Good morning, Mr. Kelsey and Mr. Peters. 
and Joey then began to walk to the bus stop. Miss Helsley slammed her front door and shut and raced down the sidewalk. A whole box of dog biscuits was in her hand. Mr. Peters, Mr. Peters, she called while he was still a block away from the bus stop. Oh, Mr. Peters, thank you so much. Everyone waiting for the bus to turn to watch Mrs. Kelsey as she ran down the sidewalk, waving a big box of dog biscuits over her head. Joey saw the box of biscuits and just started barking. The bus pulled up and Miss Jessica opened the doors, but no one got aboard. They all waited for Miss Kelsey and even Miss Jessica. Miss Kelsey shouted out again, Oh, Mr. Peters, thank you so much. She danced to halt, puffing and panting and dropped the big shopping bag and the box of dog biscuits. Mr. Peters shook his head. No, Miss Kelsey, I made them. You see, I revealed all the secrets of the sweaters that I made for my wife ago. They were warm and fuzzy. They were knitted and so were the caps. I have always liked to knit, he added. Miss Jessica laughed out loud and Miss Kelsey declared, you are an expert knitter, Mr. Peters. She looked at all the mittens, scarves, and caps. Bless you, Mr. Peters, she said, and thank you. The children will be warm now. Nobody noticed Joey offered him a dog biscuit. So he ate up all the biscuits and had spilled, that had spilled on the sidewalk. Then he and Mr. Peters continued their walk around the neighborhood, just like they did every Monday morning. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to watch next time. Until then, let's read Mobile. Goodbye, everyone.